Hello everyone, my name is Dusty Tidwell and I am the owner and creator of Resonating Dreamer. I make epoxy resin art like tumblers, coasters, eternal roses, memorial pieces, all of that fun stuff. And I have talked about making this YouTube for like two weeks now, so I'm finally doing it. I got myself up nice and pretty. I went live on TikTok, we were gonna do this, I hyped myself up, so here we are, we're finally doing this. So if you haven't already, press the subscribe button and don't forget to press the uh, little bell notification thing so y'all can get notified whenever I post a new video. I'm gonna be try and do weekly updates for follow along tutorials, tips and tricks, um, any other video that you guys can think of you want me to do it, comment down below and I will do my absolute best to get it done. So. Today, we're going to do something super, super simple. I want to start it off easy, start it off nice. We are going to be making coasters, just square little coasters. I will link everything that I use down in the bio below. Everything that I have or everything that I use is always going to be listed in the bio, so make sure you check it out. And if you have any questions, please comment them and I will answer them as best as I can. All right, guys, let's get this started. So we're just going to be using these square coasters today. And I got these coaster set uh, from Michael's, my local craft store. It came in this little set. It had five, a circle, these four, sorry, not these four, this little square, and then these three in here as well. So I did, in fact, have to buy four separate packages to get four squares. But you can use any square coaster that you find on Amazon or anywhere else if you don't want to buy four separate packs because I definitely understand it's not quite that fun to buy four separate things just to get the same shape. So I already poured my resin. So this is the hardener and this is the resin. You can tell the difference because this one is super liquidy and this one is super thick. So what we're gonna do is mix these two together so we can get them a nice, even consistency. And I will be right back. Oh my goodness, before I start and before I forget, this is an N95 mask. If you are not using the resin that I use, KS Resin, the Liquid Artist Elite one, or if you are using my resin, the KS Resin, but you're in a very small enclosed space and you don't have a lot of ventilation very well, Please wear your respirator as well. You always gotta be safe. If this is your first time ever using resin, please do this, but instead of making four coasters with me, only make one, do a small little test batch to see how your body reacts to it because everybody's bodies react differently. And then don't forget, we need to wear gloves as well. So let's jump into this. All right. So first of all, we're getting our gloves all nice and ready. Ooh, gloves and nails do not mix, but it's fine. We're getting through it. We're doing it. It's okay. Also, don't come for me for my missing two nails. Your girl had an anxiety attack and bit them off, but it's fine. It's fine. We don't talk about it. We're, we're not going to talk about it. I was going to get them redone. We're good. It's all good here. We're fine. Also, I use a reusable stir stick from Let's Resin, and I will link that in the bio as well, so don't forget to check that out. And as you're mixing this, make sure that you mix it extremely slow. Not like a snail, but still mix it really slow. And if you mix it super vigorously and extremely fast, you are going to get a lot of bubbles and a lot of micro bubbles. And micro bubbles are extremely hard to get rid of. They are damn near impossible to get rid of unless you have a pressure pot, which I don't, and I'm sure a lot of you do not either as well. So make sure you stir really slow, make sure you're getting all of it, you're scraping the sides, but do not pick your stick up out of the resin or else you will introduce bubbles into your resin as well. And it's just more bubbles that we don't need. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna stir this up and I will be right back. Okay, before I forget, like I already have, if you have long hair like I do, make sure you put your long hair back and up because we don't need that getting in our resin. We definitely don't want it in our pieces and we don't want the epoxy in our hair because that is a nightmare nobody wants to deal with. So definitely make sure you have your hair up and back and out of the way. Now we can get back to stirring. 
So, if you're like me and you have really bad wrists, I have cysts in my wrists, and when I stir for too long, too much of long periods of times, uh, within a close amount of time, my cysts flare up, and then I end up having to wear a brace on both of my wrists, and it's never fun. So, if you're like me and you have bad wrists, it's okay to take breaks. Obviously, my epoxy is not fully mixed. It's still extremely streaky. It's kind of like a milky, gross color. The bubbles inside of there are normal. They are going to rise to the top. And once they rise to the top, we just use a heat gun. I use uh, Recollection Recollections. This brand. I use this brand as the heat gun. I found it at Michael's, my local art store, my local craft store. And it was extremely user friendly. I've never used a heat gun before I used this one, and it has not failed me. So I will link this down in the bio as well. But you just want to do a quick pass over, but we will get to that point when we do. But back to my original point if you have bad wrists and you really need to take a break because your wrists are starting to hurt, that is completely fine. It's completely okay. Your resin will not combust on you, your resin will not get destroyed. If you are really careful and you do everything correctly with all of the right measurements, you will be fine taking a quick like two minute break um, in between your mixes so that your wrist can have a little break. So that's completely fine. Okay guys, well I'm on my quick two minute break for my wrist. I wanted to show you guys the resin that I use. So this is the bottles that I get. I get two gallons, so I get one gallon um, of each one twice. So I have two gallons of the hardener, two gallons of the resin. So I get the Liquid Art Elite Epoxy. It is self-healing, high temperature resistance, ultimate UV resistance. It has the longer working times. It's dry to the touch in 12 hours, absolutely crystal clear. And it's one-to-one -one mixing ratio, which means if I have 80 milliliters of the hardener, I'm gonna need 80 milliliters of the resin as well. So I absolutely love this kind. It is the only brand I will use. And their Liquid Art Elite one is the best one they have on the market, in my personal opinion. Okay guys, so I took my two minute break. I continued mixing. I've been mixing it for about two or three minutes now, extremely slowly. And as you can see, it is still quite streaky and there are still part of it of bubbles in there, which is completely fine. We will take care of the bubbles in a minute. But since it's still streaky and kind of milky in this cloudy color, what we're going to do is we're going to take a separate cup and we are going to pour this into the separate cup so then that way we get a thorough mix on it and we can make sure that it is mixed 100% through so that way we don't get any lumpy, clumpy, gooey spots when we pour our resin because if it's not mixed 100% through and you still leave it kind of streaky when you pour, you're going to get spots that completely cure and then you're going to get spots that don't cure at all. So we want to make sure that our resin is mixed completely and that there are absolutely no streaky, milky cloudiness inside of it. So give me two seconds. We're going to pour this back into this cup. Well, not back into this cup. We're going to pour this into this cup. And then we're going to continue to mix it for, I'd say, probably another four or five minutes or until it's completely clear. Whatever comes first. So I will get to mixing this and I will be back when it's all done. Okay, guys, I am back from one of my five minute little breaks for my wrists. And as you can see, there are quite a lot of bubbles on the top of this. So what we are going to do when this happens, it's a perfect chance to pop them. We're going to take our heat gun. Warning, this is going to get quite loud for just a second. We're going to take our heat gun, just pass it right over to pop the bubbles, and we're done. We're not trying to heat up the resin. We're not trying to sit there and pop them all at once. We're just going to do a quick pass over, pop, pop what we can, and then we're done with the heat gun. quick pass over, all done. If you hold this over the resin for too long, especially if you're using a plastic cup like I am, you will start to melt the plastic and we do not want that. We don't want to overheat the epoxy because it will start to mess with our cure time. It will start to mess with our work time. So we want to make sure that it's just one quick pass over or just a little floop like I did, just a quick back and forth to make sure you got all the bubbles. 
do not do it any longer than I would say 25 seconds max because you will start to overheat the resin and at that point you will be extremely likely to get a flash cure. All right, so we just popped the bubbles on the first layer like I showed you in the video, on the overhead video. And so now I do still see some streaks in here. I do see it's still kind of streaky. So what I'm gonna do is continue to mix this up and then I will be right back. That should be our final wait time, hopefully if my wrists agree with me. But that should be our final wait time until it is completely mixed up and then we'll be able to get to pouring. So I will be right back again. Okay. So we completely mixed through our resin, everything is mixed completely, I don't see any more streaks or anything like that. So before we start pouring the resin, mine is quite bubbly right now so I'm going to let it sit for about 5 minutes to allow the bubbles to rise for the resin to degas itself and then I'm going to take the heat gun, do a quick pass over to pop the rest of the bubbles and then we'll get to pouring. But in the meantime, I'm going to show you guys how to clean your stir sticks if they are reusable. And I highly recommend reusable stir sticks because if you're using anything like popsicle sticks or anything like that, they will introduce more bubbles into the resin. That is just completely unnecessary and quite frankly not really fun to get rid of. So I highly recommend any reusable stir sticks that you can find. I will link the left resin stir sticks that I'm using right now in my bio. So let's get to cleaning this thing. Okay guys, so as you can see, I am gloveless right now. I needed to grab new gloves because the gloves that I, were, I was using had resin on it. And you really don't want to use gloves that already have resin on it to clean a resin stir stick because you're just going to keep reapplying the resin from your glove onto the stir stick and it'll never actually get clean. So always make sure that you get new gloves every time you go to clean your stir sticks or every time you go to clean your reusable cups or whatever it is you're uh, cleaning if you have resin on your gloves change your gloves all right so let's grab our stir stick really quick and then I just have like three little things of paper towels all folded up nicely plop that right in the middle and then this is rubbing alcohol that I have in a little glass vial spray bottle thing that I found I usually use 91 or 99%, but I could only find 91% at my local grocery store. I don't necessarily recommend 91%, but it works if it's all you can find. You can use any little spray bottle you found. I found this here on my house, so I'm just gonna reuse it. So you're just gonna cover this as much as you possibly can. Flip the stir stick over so you make sure to get the other side. And I like to saturate this thing so I can make sure that it's getting as clean as possible and I'm getting all of the resin off. So I kind of just rub it to make sure we're getting it. And then I grab one end of it, fold the paper towel in half, and I just squeeze and pull. So I'm pulling all of the resin off, make sure you're getting all of the sides. And then do the tip that you stir with, or the tip that you hold to stir it I guess so you can make sure we're getting it all and it's gonna look wet and nasty and gross but that's fine and then I kind of run my gloves over it make sure that there's no parts that feel slimy and I don't feel anything so we got all the resin off so I just put that to the side on a silicone mat or anywhere where it's not going to stick to the table just in case there is any leftover silicone on it, or not silicone, any more uh, leftover resin on it. Toss away the paper towel, toss away the gloves, we'll put on some new gloves and we'll get to pouring. Okay, so what we're going to do in this video, making these four coasters, I'm going to use alcohol ink to kind of drop in here. And then we're going to pour the resin right over the alcohol ink and it's going to create something extremely unique and extremely beautiful. So I'm going in with the color Mermaid from Ranger Alcohol Inks and the color Gumball because I think these two go really, really well together to do kind of like a gumball cotton candy kind of-ish feel. So I got these from my local craft store, Michael's. Um, I will link them down in the description below. They are also on Amazon. So if you followed me on TikTok for a while, you will know that in all of my videos, 
I spritz this little brown bottle all over my molds before I even pour the resin. So everyone constantly asks me, what is in the little brown bottle? What is that liquid? It's my rubbing alcohol. So the rubbing alcohol is going to prevent bubbles forming, especially in these little crevices and these little cracks. I guess not cracks, but in these little corners um, where it's normally really, really common for bubbles to appear and along the edges um, on coasters. Uh, rubbing alcohol will actually help it so it prevents any bubbles It will help pop any bubbles that are there and it gets into the little cracks and crevices and creases and all of your molds so that way it'll help get rid of any air pockets or bubbles that appear but it won't deteriorate your mold so it's my absolute favorite thing to use a lot of people use mold release because it also helps when you're demolding your resin I personally just use alcohol because I feel like it works a lot better than mold release does and it gives me better options with the bubbles and mold release doesn't do that. So I always use alcohol ink, not alcohol ink, rubbing alcohol. And I saturate mine, like I saturate mine real good. But you don't have to, you can just do a couple spritz here and there if you're more comfortable with it. I just prefer to saturate the whole thing so I know I got every single little crack. Okay, so now that I've been letting the resin sit for about five minutes to help with the bubbles, the resin looks a lot more clear. There are still some bubbles, but that is completely fine. We will get to those when we start pouring. So we're going to want to start with the alcohol inks first. And I don't recommend putting the alcohol inks too far ahead of when you're ready to pour the resin because alcohol inks do stain your molds. And if you get it to the point where it starts to dry on your mold, when you pour the resin over the alcohol inks, it's not going to give you the desired effect. So I only put the alcohol inks on right before I pour. So that way it gets you the desired effect. It's going to flow magically instead of being stuck in those two little circles like it would if they dried. So we're going to go ahead and shake these up real good. Make sure the color is all nice and well. And we're just going to start dripping it over. Good lord, if I can open this. Oh my goodness. There it goes. All right. There is no right way to do this. Absolutely no right way to do this. You can do it freehand, do whatever you want, pour dots wherever you want. It is completely up to you and the universe. And you don't have to do this every which way. There is no certain amount of drops you can add. There is no certain amount of drops you should avoid. Just have fun with it. Now, one thing I wouldn't recommend is completely pouring a whole thing of alcohol ink into your mold because your resin will not cure at that point so i have done some with just a few dots a little more dots kind of a lot of dots and then a lot of dots so you guys can see the results of each and every one so now that we've got that going we're gonna pour our resin straight over it and it will just flow And you are going to see those little circles of where the alcohol ink was sitting and that is completely fine it's completely normal so if you get those in your pieces trust me you didn't do anything wrong it is completely normal and then since resin does shrink as it cures i always make sure to fill the mold to the very very tippy top where it kind of looks like the resin is just barely doming over the edges. It kind of looks like a bubble on top, like it's jello. But that's just so I can make sure that it is completely filled and will look absolutely perfect when I pour it out. All right. Okay. So this is what everything is looking like right now. You can see that each one did its own kind of different thing. We've got some that are pulling up this way. You've got some where they're just pulling straight up. And then you've got some corners where they're mixing all pretty like. So we take our alcohol, our rubbing alcohol. Yes, spritz it over a few times right on top of the resin. So that it will help with any bubbles that are going to appear it helps with any bubbles that are there currently and we wait a full 24 hours so it can cure 
I'm gonna wait so you guys don't have to. I'm gonna be right back and we'll unbolt these together. All right, guys, it has been a full 24 hours now. I am back. I'm looking a hot mess today, but it's okay. We don't talk about that. It's fine. Anyways, so it's been a full 24 hours. Our resin is completely cured. So let's go ahead and unmold these and let's see what we created. Okay, so as you can tell, each and every one is completely cured and hard. So let's go ahead and take these out of the mold. And as I can see, like I told you guys before, you are gonna see some of the little circles where the alcohol ink was dropped, but that is completely okay. And as you can see, some of the colors mix to make a really pretty purple. I absolutely love making these. Alcohol ink is my favorite thing to use because you can never guess what you're gonna get. Each and every one is gonna come out different and completely unique. Let's see. And although they look similar, each and every one has different patterns that the ink did. Like this one right here gathered up a lot of the blue, whereas this one, if you can see the blue kind of came up and around so that's what i really love about alcohol ink and this one did something really cool right here on the edge if you can already see it is that the pink and the blue mixed very well and it created this little spot of just purple and i absolutely love that so i know it's kind of hard to see so actually what i'm gonna do let's put a paper towel down Y'all can see the color better. There we go. See that pop so much better. And just putting them side by side, you can see the complete differences between the two. And let's put the other two side by side. Absolutely gorgeous. These are so fun to make. I absolutely love making coasters. They're so simple, super easy, and I think they are absolutely wonderful as beginner sets. Because even though they're different and even though they seem pretty simple... They're super easy to make. People absolutely love coaster sets. And I can promise you that these are gonna be very popular. Even if it's to friends, to family, to somebody, there's always someone in the market that is going to absolutely love what you make. It may not be for everybody, but there's always someone. So never get discouraged, never feel bad if your art doesn't sell right away. If you're doing this as just a hobby and you just want to give it away to friends, that's absolutely wonderful. If you're doing this to actually sell and you don't get um, a lot of sales or anything like that, do not dis get discouraged. Anyways, <laughs> do not get discouraged because everyone has different preferences for their art. Everyone is going to love your art. There's always going to be someone who is going to absolutely fall in love with your art and the way that you do it specifically. So never give up, always keep going, always keep creating new things, trying new techniques, and challenge yourself. Always, always challenge yourself. If you find something you absolutely love, stick to it and absolutely do that. But don't forget to challenge yourself and try something new because you can't grow if you don't try something new. So before I end this video, I wanna let you guys know what I do with all of my resin that drips on the ground. So, not on the ground, on the table. So all of the resin that drips on my silicone mats, I peel them off so I get like these little drips and I stick them in my little scrap jar. And what I do with my little scrap jars is I will put them in little glass vials, little glass jars like this. And I will make them into necklaces, into earrings or anything like that, sometimes keychains. Because people will absolutely love these and even though it's just scraps and you might not think anything of it, it is an amazing way to keep all of your scraps, use all of your scraps, make sure that everything that you're using is being put to good use and not being thrown away. And people will love these. It may not be for everybody, but there are people who love these. So I recommend keeping all of your scraps. It's super fun and super satisfying to peel them off the silicone anyways. Um, so I have fun doing that. So if you do make a mess and it does spill, I don't say clean it up right away as soon as it happens. Let it cure uh, in 24 hours and then come back the next day, start peeling them off and keep it all. So 
so that will be it for my very first YouTube video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for joining me. Comment down below what you think. Comment down below what you want to see next. I would absolutely love to hear from you guys. And I hope you guys learned something from this. I hope you guys have an absolutely wonderful day. And thank you so much for joining me on this new adventure in our lives. Let's learn together. Let's grow together. And let's create together. This has been Mama Dreamer. I cannot wait to see all of you little dreamers out there. Have a good day, guys.